Hey, 42 here. The honeybee is one of the most incredible creatures on planet Earth. Each worker bee grafts tirelessly its entire life to create just one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. So when you put your honey on your toast in the morning, you are eating the entire lifetime achievements of around 40 bees. Bees can communicate with each other with incredible accuracy via the medium of dance. Bees have a range of different dances to tell other hive members where the best nectar-rich flowers are located. Through these waggle dances, they can convey information such as distance, direction, the angle of the flowers relative to the sun, and even how good the flowers are. Bee pollination is crucial to the survival of mankind. The activities of bees nurtures the crops us humans live off. In fact, over one third of all food you find in the supermarket requires bee pollination to exist. If there were no bees, 33% of all food you know would be no more. And over 90% of the world's plants requires bees. Over the past decade, there has been an awful lot of talk about saving the honeybees. And you may have heard that the honeybee has been put onto the endangered species list. But this is simply a case of misinformation being virally spread around the internet, as it often is. Truth is, the honeybee is absolutely fine. There is nothing to worry about. In fact, since 2006, the honeybee population has increased year on year. It's true that if the honeybee population did drastically reduce, it could cause a total ecosystem breakdown and the end of the human race. A terrifying thought. But with hundreds of thousands of private beekeepers worldwide, the chances of honeybees becoming endangered are basically non-existent. So, what was all the panic about? The only bees that were identified as being endangered were in fact a tiny handful of obscure bee species that are endemic to Hawaii. So unless you happen to live in Hawaii, the bees you see buzzing around you every day, happily pollinating plants and making honey, are going absolutely nowhere. But there is an extremely common animal that poses an even greater threat to the survival of mankind than the honeybee. An animal that is the universal mascot of the internet. The internet's court jester, the cat. They may have provided you with countless lols, and you should be very thankful that they have. Because if the cat were to become extinct, it would likely be the end of the human race. Cats are members of a family of carnivores called Philidae, which includes tigers, cougars, and cheetahs. And like their distant cousins, cats have sharp, retractable claws, amazingly quick reflexes, and sharp teeth that can effortlessly clamp into a prey's flesh. But cats have a predatory asset that their larger, scarier family members don't. A cat has a physics-defying, astonishingly flexible body. They are more agile than big cats such as tigers. Statistically, cats are one of the best hunters in the entire animal kingdom. A study found that tigers were only successful at catching their prey 5% of the time. Domestic cats are successful 32% of the time, which means that they are listed as the sixth most successful hunting animal in the world. But over in Africa, there is an endemic species of cat known as the black-footed cat, which is even more crazy. This species catches its prey 60% of the time, and they make an average of 14 kills every night, making the black-footed cat the second most successful predator in the animal kingdom. The only animal more successful is the African wild dog at number one. All this means that cats are the world's most well-adapted and best predator for catching small rodents. Rats and mice being so small, cute and defenseless have been forced to develop extraordinary reaction times and rapid speeds and agility so that they can evade predators. 
yet the domestic cat still manages to track them and catch them with ease. The sadistic buggers don't even hunt rodents for food, it is quite literally a game to them. Experts have actually said that a well-fed cat catches more rodents than a hungry cat because they do it for entertainment. Wow, cats are evil. And that is exactly why we need cats for our survival. By hunting and killing rodents and rabbits, cats are doing the world a vital service. Yes, last time your little meowly Cyrus bought you a gruesome present, she was saving the world. A study in 1997 found that in Britain alone, house cats collectively kill over 200 million species of wildlife each year. Cats, therefore, play a vital role in keeping the rodent and rabbit populations in check all over the world. The phrase breeding like rabbits is no misnomer. Each season, a rabbit can give birth to over a hundred babies. And if you think that's bad, rats are even worse. A female rat can mate up to 500 times with various males over a six hour period. And a single pair of rats can produce over 2,000 offspring per year. If left to their own devices, a pair of rats can have over half a billion descendants within just three years. But thankfully, rats and other invasive rodents aren't left to their own devices. They are constantly on a defensive and their population numbers are maintained at a healthy, balanced level by the hard work of cats. Cats are one of the few animals on the planet, and most certainly the best, that can actually hunt and catch the notoriously slippery rodents. Cats, therefore, are the best method Mother Nature has for preventing rat populations from exploding exponentially and taking over the world. Without cats, our world would be overrun by rats within a year or two. Trillions upon trillions of rodents and other small invasive species would invade every home, every business, and every square mile of the planet. But apart from being really scary, why would this be so terrible? Are rats really that dangerous? Yes. Rats pose two major threats to mankind and the entire ecosystem. The first is disease. Although it is widely debated by historians, it is widely thought that rats were the main spreader of the bubonic plague, a disease which almost wiped out Europe. Whether or not rats were responsible for the Black Death, their bacteria spreading abilities should not be underestimated. Rats spend most of their time hanging out in sewers, around piles of rubbish, and of course dead animals. These are not things that one would call hygienic. There can be several thousand pathogens on just a centimeter of a rat's fur, most of which can be spread to humans, and they don't even have to bite you. Disease can be transmitted to humans through scratches, skin contact, and worst of all, through their excrement and urine. Rats use urine to communicate, to mark territory, and just because they need to go and they will urinate absolutely anywhere and everywhere. Come into contact with it and you're certain to fall ill. Rats carry some rather horrific diseases, such as Hantavirus Pulmonary Syndrome, or HPS, which can be contracted by just breathing the air around where a rat has been. HPS restricts your breathing and is often fatal. Once the onset of symptoms has occurred, death can happen in as little as a few hours. So that's scary, but that's just a fraction of the horrors that rats possess. They also carry typhus, salmonella, meningitis, and leptospirosis, all of which can be fatal to humans. Thankfully, most people very rarely come into contact with rats due to our relatively hygienic environment and most importantly the global prevalence of rat-killing cats. Without cats, 
There would be no stopping the rapid multiplication of rats and the inevitable outbreaks of many horrific diseases. But believe it or not, disease isn't the worst thing that would happen if rodents took over the world. Hunger would be the worst thing. Cats have us all fooled, thinking they rely on their owners for survival. Well, here's the brutal truth. Your cat doesn't need you. Cats are very independent, and even the laziest of house cats can find food for themselves quite easily, if they choose to. They only eat food that you provide for them because it's easier. In fact, when your pet kitty brings you a dead mouse and leaves it on your doorstep as a nice little gift, it's actually trying to teach you how to hunt, because it thinks that you're a pathetic human that can't find its own food. Oh dear. But it's this very behaviour that has thus far saved us all from mass starvation. And let me tell you why. You see, cats hunt and kill a variety of rodents, such as mice and rats. Rodents just love to eat food staples such as grain, the very grain which we all eat every day. Farm cats play a vital role in the modern ecosystem. By killing mice and rats that live in and around storage barns where grain is kept, they stop all the grain from being consumed or spoiled by the hungry rodents. But if losing all our grain to rodents wouldn't be bad enough, rats aren't that picky. When they're hungry, they will chow down on just about anything, from trash to animal and human cadavers and any crop or food stuff that may be lying around. In a post-cataleptic world, where rats and mice are free to multiply by the billions, each and every one of our food sources would be decimated or disease-ridden before it even leaves the farm. A global famine would be an absolute certainty. But unfortunately, disease and food shortages wouldn't be the end of our troubles. The entire ecosystem would also collapse due to the domino effect. Macquarie Island is a super remote island owned by Australia. Viewing the feral cat population on the island as somewhat of a nuisance because they were killing the local seabirds, a cat eradication program was started, and between 1985 and 2000, every single feral cat on Macquarie Island was killed. And then, of course, within no time at all, the local rat and rabbit populations quadrupled, and they, in turn, caused massive devastation to the island's vegetation, depleting all food sources for the countless other animal species that they shared the island with. And the scientists on the island soon found out that rats just love to feed on the eggs of the very seabirds which they intended to save. The local seabird population declined at an astonishing rate due to the plentiful amount of rats and the lack of cats. The ecosystem is a very delicate balancing act, and this experiment just goes to show that we shouldn't mess with it, because the tiniest of changes can have enormous, irreparable effects. Humans have still not formulated an effective method of pest control for rats. The array of rat poisons available just flat out don't work, at least not in the long run. Rats are smarter than we give them credit for. And as soon as one of the mischief, yes that is what a group of rats is called, dies from eating rat poison, the rest of the mischief learns not to trust that food location or that food in the future. Either that or they employ a super taster rat called Remy to check all their food before consumption. In recent years, scientists have even found groups of rats that have developed a natural immunity to rat poisons. Until our artificial rodent deterrents are developed further and become more effective, cats remain our only truly effective weapon against them. So as long as we have Moggy, we should be okay. That is of course until rats learn how to weaponize cucumbers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video then please click here to support me on Patreon, which really helps out the channel and you can get some cool rewards. Click here to watch another video, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.